This is East Croydon. The train now standing at platform 3 is the 0722 Southern service to London Victoria. Calling at Clapham Junction and London Victoria. Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening and good night. This is British Rails and uh, today we're just having a look at uh, part of the West Coast Mainline Scottish region route being built. This is a bit of sped up time lapse footage of some of the work done on Hartwood. Hartwood Station, which was uh, originally built as part of uh, well, a connection to a psychiatric hospital on the line between Edinburgh and Glasgow that goes via Livingston so not actually on the uh, technically on the route of uh, Glasgow to Carlisle one of the extra little spurs just have a look at something different today so just uh, measuring up the platforms making sure that the uh, the curve radius is there these um, these platform surfaces are a bit frustrating they don't always load up on my computer on the uh, on the um, visualization so I might have to change these at some point or it might just be I have to change my uh, my graphics card so yeah lining them up just running through very quickly sort of process I go through to uh, get a uh, uh, a diorama underway um, I do a lot of referencing to photos on the internet have a look at uh, some resources and of course I've made things quite difficult for myself because this is uh, a route that is set in the mid 1980s to the mid 1990s so it's not current year it is uh, historical to a degree so Google Maps and Google Earth can give me a good idea to work with obviously I've used for transdem on modern imagery as well but uh, it means relentless um, stepping back and forward and looking at um, evidence to try and double check what I'm looking at is uh, has not changed drastically from the era that I'm modeling um, obviously one of the biggest uh, issues I come up against in the in the layout development is the M74 the M74 down to um, what is it the M73 M74 M73 the the motorway that joins down to the M6 on the border at Carlisle so from Glasgow all the way down uh, for most of this stretch of time that I am modeling wasn't there so it's there on my map my transdam layer but I'm technically modeling the A road as it was which is a slightly different route that's caused a lot of stress and heartache and my desire to be accurate has left me um, very tired so in the end what I have done is that I've gone for a little bit of modeling license in places and uh, that's made things much more comfortable. Since then, I have found uh, a brilliant website called uh, Old Maps. And um, I do use that a lot now to double check if there is uh, maps available on their database for an area I'm looking at. I do use that to look at the 1980s period. So when I'm looking at uh, built up areas, um, I can double check if, if the building profile is the same and then look at some old photographs and try and find photographs of that area. Now this bridge here, I will do, uh, I'll let me see the cutaways to the uh, Railscot page with the images. This bridge is, is try, I'm trying to recreate the look as it was in around about 1987 to 1989. Just It looks a bit different. I mean, I did create, again, another rod for my own back by using kit building on every single bridge that I've been building on the on the route, which was foolish, but there you go. Um, and this one looked a little bit different, so I thought I would uh, indulge myself in that fact. In fact, in a minute you'll see, um, I think I've just dashed down to Carl Luke there to get a piece to start building another bridge. This is the kit building bridge process. You can see FMA pieces, uh, FMA uh, bridge base, and then uh, NEX gray brick, um, parts and it's done like this every single time um, which again is in retrospect foolish but uh, there you are it's uh, it's the standard I've set myself now if you have a look at what I'm doing here um, to my form of building the bridges just a 
putting those splines too long, putting in the insertion uh, um, point, and then bringing the point to the uh, to the intersection. Obviously, here we've got different heights of uh, splines, and we also have uh, a wall as well as um, the top wall. And then, as you can see, constantly fiddling, making sure the splines don't link together. Crazy stuff. Drive a man to drink. Um, but there you go. That's um, obviously sped up, but that's uh, me putting together a road bridge on um, on Hartwood, the uh, the east end of the station at Hartwood. Um, again, you can see there's some license being used here in terms of the uh, the length or the uh, the gradient of those hills coming up through those bridges. Um, it is. I am trying to be as accurate as possible, but there are limits within the technical capabilities of, of, of my building um, and also of uh, the pieces that are available on the on the program. So I started this started this project. My goodness, must be about three and a half years ago um, when I finally got hold of uh, Transdem software. And um, obviously, it hasn't taken me for a year. So I, I do it in in fits and starts. Um, I do have a job and a family <laughs> and a life. Um, but uh, we are we're getting to a point now where um, I really do, as a route builder, truly understand the sunken cost fallacy. It's not a fallacy anymore. I mean, I have committed too much time to this project. Um, it, it's not an, when you're route building. I mean, people might be familiar with uh, building a layout, uh, model railway builders, or even people who use trains. But but route building, and I think we're a bit of a, an unusual breed. Route building is is that to the power of infinity. Uh, huge stretches, and um, each little area becomes its own little. Uh, layout project on its own um, and you just get to a point where you are beyond the point where you can pack it all in this, this route this route originally was supposed to be just a a large layout it was uh, originally modeled around the Carstairs Junction area it went um, way short of Carl Luke to the north and um, plenty short of uh, Thankerton in the south and um, just basically was that triangle of lines with the junction and the option to head off to Edinburgh sorry it's me distracted because I can hear rain outside and um, but my advice to any of the builders at the time was um, keep it small give yourself um, finite uh, barri uh, boundaries to build to and um, you'll get to see it finished rather than get depressed about the amount of work you've given yourself. And obviously I, I followed my advice to the letter and uh, here I am now spending, as you can see, I mean this is, this is okay, this is time lapse sped up, but you can see this is spending time just on uh, a through station, a small through station on a spur line. It's a line that is, is there just to, allow, effectively just to allow trains to uh, run at accurate speed when they come on to the line and will probably almost almost never <laughs> get used in scenarios I mean obviously one day I mean, if I can team up with someone else or uh, if I get this finished I might look at opening this out obviously you have this will join I think it's the mid Calder Junction near Kirk Newton uh, in, um, in Lothian and that would join with the line coming up north from Carstairs at, I say, at mid Cold Junction, yeah, in, uh, just before Kirk Newton Station, after Livingston. So, I mean, I could push my model, my, my route out to Edinburgh. You know, and then what's to stop me from uh, modelling the entire railway network of Scotland? <laughs> Why ever not? <laughs> it can't be that complicated, surely. Um, I mean... I originally wanted, I mean, I've always loved the West Highland line. I originally, if I, if I was going to do a full route, that would have been the one. But then, yeah, I just, as much as I love it, it would be a scenic um, 
operation rather than a, uh, a railway operation. And the West Coast Main Line just offers so much more variety and so much more interest. Uh, but of course, as well, you know, more work as well. Uh, catenary is um, is no easy business, not at all. So here we go, starting to put in the um, some of the buildings for Hartwood. And of course, again, you can see these pauses is when these are when I'm I'm looking back at some of my reference material to check the difference between what I can see on my map and on my uh, my satellite imagery and what it used to look like in the in the era that I'm modelling. Yeah, and you might think it's a bit overkill to go that in much into detail, but I'll know. I'll know as I'm driving my one five six through the station, but that's not supposed to be there. So, um, really, the the idea I, th I think you have to keep in your head is how far from the line are you going to model to detail or accuracy? And you're limited by those obvious factors of, of the capacity of your machine to run it, but also um, it is worth checking how much you can see from the cab when you're driving. And whether you want to think how far you want your 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 scenery to be, so you can look from a distance or from those higher uh, shots you can take. Um, I've always ended up modelling more of away from the line than you can see from the cab, because I want to be able to have those long sweeping shots from above as well and recreate photos. It's one of the things I like to do when uh, I'm taking a bit of a break from my slarty bar fasting, is to um, Look, find photos on the internet and uh, try to see if I can recreate them on my route as it is at the moment. Um, so you can see here some boring stuff, putting in the uh, the field colours. But there you go, that's um, something along the lines of a couple of hours work. And uh, Hartwood is beginning to take shape from uh, a completely blank canvas at the start. Um, this has been a bit of an experiment video to see uh, to see if I can that a, a fairly interesting standard um, while I'm watching these kind of things um, I do want to do some videos of um, some of the construction process on the other parts of the line other parts are obviously are, are much more further detailed or along the way but um, it's difficult to do it live because a lot of his work, as I said, is interspersed with uh, doing some research on particular locations and also um, finding, I spent an awful lot of time rolling through my um, my library of models to, start to find things that are appropriate. And that's not a particularly interesting watch. Um, as you can see here, I tend to throw one line down, get it nice and tight to gradient and point and then bring the second line in um, before starting to do the, um, the landscaping around it. It's all rather tedious. I'm sure anybody who's familiar with route building or layout building in trains knows that feeling. Um, I played around with the idea of uh, putting a portal early on this exit, I think, and then thought, as I said to you earlier on, I might end up just building through on this route. So um, that was a, a interesting five minute diversion <laughs> I didn't need to do. But there you go, uh, that's an experiment. Um, I'll sign off now and uh, get back to some building and show you a bit more of the roads in another video. Nine.